Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on advertise. Join us at the Lacrosse Winter Roots Festival Saturday, February 11th at the Lacrosse Center. We'll celebrate Wisconsin favorites in music, cuisine, local beer, and spirits. Grab tickets at lacrosselocal.com. We talk with Sam Brown, music enthusiast and founder of both the Big Turn Music Fest and Midwest Music Fest. We chat about early beginnings and the history of the Minnesota-based music festivals. We also get into his own music moniker, Bo Monroe, and what people can anticipate from the Big Turn Music Fest happening February 17th and 18th in Red Wing, Minnesota. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Sam Brown, and I was born in Red Wing, Minnesota. And what led to my uh, my interest in music is the way I was raised with my folks. I was having a piano in our living room. My dad would always play guitar as a young young kid. I remember. It's really interesting though because like I never wanted to play guitar until one of my buddies at school was like, "Hey man, you wanna you wanna come jam and play guitar." even though I grew up with it around me all the time. Yeah, so that was kind of where the the spark for music came from. And I, I will say that, you know, the spark for music organizing came from growing up in Red Wing and not really having many outlets for young people to perform. I think that's a, a, a pretty regular problem for kids who are wanting to perform I felt like the need to create spaces for, for my friends who are, who are writing music and performing music. And that's where I started like snow lights and sound was a show that I started a holiday show that I started when I was in college, kind of like an early, an early show that I organized and it went for about four or five years with the, with the capstone of Charlie Parr performed at it one year. And it was out at the Hobgoblin music barn, which is a barn outside of Red Wing that is a venue and a music store and a music shop and just a magical place. And that was one of my earlier feathers in my cap as far as like getting people together to listen to music we always had like around 120 people and you know like some of my friends who went on to be like producers and Trapper Shep would play out there and me I would usually have a combo I'd play out there too there's some YouTube videos but yeah anyway (laughs) <laughs> I got to get to know you, you know, through Midwest Music Fest, which you created this festival just happened here in La Crosse. Right. You know, what's the what's the history with that? When I got exposed to it, it also opened me up to other festivals like Mile of Music in Appleton, Wisconsin. Right. Now, you know, I don't miss a Midwest Music Fest, whether it's in Winona or La Crosse. Yeah. Um, so I'll try to be really brief. I, <laughs> I actually wrote down some notes before uh, our call. So when I was in university, I w- there was a, an event there called Woolapalooza, which was, Woo is the acronym for my university, and then Lapalooza is their ripping off of Perry Farrell's <laughs> <laughs> Lollapalooza. But um, I uh, performed at that event for four years. I helped organize it for three years, and then I became the president my, of the club my senior year of college. That year, we uh, we turned the whole thing around. It was kind of going downhill. And then we turned it around and got like uh, Viva Voce, Cloud Cult, The Long Winters. It was just a really, really successful event that we put together that senior year. That set a trajectory for 
uh, the kids behind us to finally get someone like Portugal the Man. And uh, before Portugal the Man became the super super huge band, but you know, still Pitchfork picked it up and covered the Woolapalooza Fest after I had left, you know, which is pretty cool. Then uh, I was living in Salem, Oregon, and uh, the Mix and Mash Festival is going to be the first exposure I had to a festival kind of like the Midwest Music Fest, which is a local Salemite uh, named Ross, Ross Schwartz and Druber, was organizing a citywide fest, and I offered to help him pull it off, and it was kind of like I got connected with him too close to the fest to really make it super successful it, so it was like we ran out of time but the thing that was cool about this festival was it had many aspects to it including music film fashion art dance all through town and it was like the idea was to build out the festival year round and every couple of months have one of these festivals be in town and then the mix and mash was the culmination of all of them huh. so i thought that was a really cutting edge idea and but it was ultimately too ambitious for the team that we had put together the most popular part of the mix and mash fest was the music segment and so we started what we called the cherry city music festival which is basically you know a version of what the midwest music fest has become where you have all the big rooms in town in concert with concerts and uh, <laughs> in concert with concerts. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. And uh, that is what we tried to pull off the winter of 2009. So like right, right when the bubble burst under Obama and we all remember that time, it was a, it was a dark time. But unfortunately, what happened to me was I was unable to see it through to the end because I was diagnosed with bipolar during the, the planning of the festival. And this led me back to Minnesota. And I had to take care of myself before I could help anyone else, you know. So that leads me back to Minnesota. And I was looking for work and I applied to AmeriCorps and got offered a position either. I had a choice of either Caledonia or Winona and I chose mm. Winona. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially how, you know, where, where the Midwest Music Fest came from, it was a project for AmeriCorps because we needed to have a summer service project that would take up hours for us to give back to the community in the summer is my, was my understanding. You know, I chose to do a, a citywide music festival that no one thought would happen. And it did. And it was, you know, here we are 15, 14 years later. <laughs> but, Man. Yeah, I know. And it's grown to lacrosse now, two festivals throughout the year. It just seems to be something that, you know, is established and it kind of holds those initial sort of qualities of having multi venues, multi artists in all genres. It's been a real blast to go these past, uh, man, I would say at least past seven years that I've attended. Cool. That's, that's really great to hear. There's so many facets to what the festival does for the community. It, it brings artists together so they can network. It brings business into the local businesses so it's got economic impact. You know, it gives uh, festival patrons a really excellent time that they will always remember, you know, like, it's great. I, I love these things. So is that kind of like, you know, Big Turn Music Festival, which is now in Red Wing, it's taking right. place February 17th through the 18th, 2023. Another creation of yours, I think right around the time, the first one you started, you were talking to me about it. And that's another festival you kind of put, you know, put it together well, but you put it together pretty quickly, right? Just to get back home, get back to Red Wing where it all started in some sense. Yeah. So I will say uh, both of the festivals came together in less than six months. I'm going to just meander around that question for a second. <laughs> the Midwest Music Fest in in Winona 
started in February, and it was July was the date, the end wow. of July. So maybe that's not six months, but it's it felt like it. Pretty quick. Uh, yeah, it was very quick. And then the big turn, the same thing. It was like August is when I started the groundwork on it. It was February 20 something or 20th or so for when we uh, we got to the the concerts. So for Winona, how I started, it was pretty much I came up with the name, built a website, built a logo, the Sunrays and Sugarloaf and the MWMF and put that on every piece of paper that I had. And everyone just was like, wow, this looks really good. <laughs> and then for Big Turn, I pretty much close to doing the same thing but i my cousin adam brown is actually a a really really talented graphic designer and so i didn't have to do the heavy lifting on the logo design this time around and he came up with our buoy logo and came on board as the creative director right right from the start and he's amazing <laughs> you know just looking at your website at bigturnmusicfest.com you know, I haven't been an opportunity to get down there just yet. I'm definitely going to make it. It's over my birthday this year, but. Oh, nice. So 200 bands, man, 200 bands, 20 venues. Has that grown? It, bands? It's ebbing and flowing a little bit. Like in 2020, we had around 230 bands, wow. I think. But it's shaping up. It's going to be closer to 230 than I had anticipated. <laughs> because uh, we're talking about moving. We're talking about ap- approaching some venues and seeing if they would uh, allow us to go earlier into the day on Saturday. So we'll see. It's kind of up in the air at this moment. But yeah, Big Turn is an allusion to the river where it takes a sharp bend in Red Wing. And a friend of mine and I came up with the name. It just made so much sense. You know, like... I want it to be something that's very Red Wing, but not a wing or whatever. You know, like Red Red Wing has really strong branding as it is for a city. And I I want it to be unique. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you've ever driven in there, you know, if you're going up the Great River Road, I mean, it just makes complete sense when you hear that name and what town it's in. In terms of like the venues, is this even more walkable than one in Lacrosse that in Winona, or is this kind of spread out? I'm trying to this think is, of what Red Wing looks like, and this is extremely walkable. Yeah, we're talking like about a four block radius. Wow, that's intense. And and <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like obviously the the biggest venue we use is the Sheldon, mm-hmm. which is a jewel box theater in Red Wing that just. It's been recently renovated. It's beautiful. It's like the crown jewel of town, basically, when it comes to live performances. They've been really great to work with and really great to allow us to bring in music once a year. And last year we had High Respects, Brothers Burn Mountain, Annie Mac, Cloud Cult, Low, and Bad Bad Hats for the little turn which is what i called it because <laughs> we had to pull back the reins on the whole festival because of uh covid and such so yeah we have a total of 21 venues including the saint james hotel there's a lot of big limestone churches in town oh. there's three of them within a one block radius of each other and all three of them will be uh venues Then there's smaller non-traditional venues like a bookstore, a framing shop, an underground boxing gym. It's going to be a really good time. I'm excited because last night I actually just kind of finished up slotting all the all the bands that I'm well, as as I told you earlier, I'm I might be uh, expanding it a little bit, but uh, we're pretty much slotted up for the whole festival so one thing component you know i noticed from midwest music but also big turn is you know you also pull out your music usually it's you know during the day for 
maybe if there's a yoga class, but you come out and play guitar for under the moniker Bo Monroe. Yeah. Is that something you always kind of pull out for each festival? Or yeah. Like, so Bo, Bo Monroe, well, I actually haven't played since the first one, which was 2018. But so when I do play music, I play under the moniker Bo Monroe. And uh, it's a, a name that means a whole lot to me because Bo was my nickname in high school. Monroe is a family name. My great grandfather's name was Monroe Brown. And my dad, my older brother, my cousin Adam all share the middle name Monroe. And Adam's child now is named Monroe. So it's just a really strong family name that I've adopted for my own uh, purposes of wanting to not just be Sam Brown. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, like my music is kind of like different than your average it's not like singer songwriter stuff it's not like rock band stuff it's kind of like ambient instrumental uh like atmospheric stuff that you can just kind of like drive to (laughs) i don't know so it may make an appearance in this uh, upcoming festival then maybe it might you know um (laughs) i i have another uh another project that I call it Explore the Cannon Bottoms, and that's with uh, Tim Thomas and Noah Short. We get together and play uh, a couple times a year. It's, you know, it's just been hard to get together this past year, but, like, we play out at uh, out at my studio at the Anderson Center, and, yeah, so. It's getting there. I mean, I mean it's, we're just in fall right now. We're recording this, so there's going to be a lot of, I assume news and lineup coming out with the festival. People should probably start planning now. What is the best avenue for people to go to to find out the schedule, the venues, all that jazz? We spent a lot of time updating our website. It's not fully live yet. Like We're going to have a mobile-ready website with everyone's schedule, everyone who plays the festival a photo, you know, a link to hear them, that where they're playing during the festival. So that will be live by the time we announce the lineup, which is coming in November. So, and the the website is uh, www.bigturnmusicfest.com. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.